Hey guys, Cyber Aquarius here. In this video, I want to show you guys the JBio DP4 dosing pump. I uh, set up two of them over the past couple weeks. One here on my 25 gallon, and the other one on my 38 gallon. So I'm going to just show you guys how I set it up. I'm going to show you some features of the dosing pumps. And uh, lastly, I'm going to talk about a calibration issue that I discovered. If you're using a nano tank, you're going to want to make note of this because uh, it really could affect your dosing, throw off your parameters if you don't calibrate it correctly. I installed both of my dosing pumps in the exact same fashion on both of my aquariums. But I'm going to run you guys through the installation of my 38 just to show you what I did, give you guys some ideas. Now they have an actual shelf that you can buy for the JBAL DP4. It cost a little more than $20, but what I did was I just picked up two L brackets at my local hardware store for $1.88 a piece, mounted one on each side so that I was able to center up the dosing pump in my cabinet. This allows my hoses to hang freely, you know, versus sitting on a shelf, the hoses would be, you know, could possibly get kinked. And it also allows the hoses uh, to drape underneath and return to my display without you know without any kinks and it also gave me uh, room to run the other power cables and electrical outlets and stuff from my other equipment um, on top of my brackets I use some more PS Enzolite which is a sound deadening material for car audio installations which by the way is another hobby of mine and uh, the, the foam material actually absorbs any vibration from the motor housing which keeps this unit extremely quiet. Uh, it's getting ready to administer a dose of calcium on pump number two in eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. That was it. See how quiet it is? But the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is set the date and the time. So let me take you in here to the control panel. It's pretty straightforward. Left and right, up and down arrows, uh, enter button in the center and then an escape button so to program the unit you're going to want to hit that center button it shows the date and the time you're going to hit it again to enter the program feature and indicated by a little arrow set date and time you hit that center button again and you scroll through the different values and you would hit the up or down arrows to change the values it's a year month and day once you have that set hit that center button again and it takes you to the time it's in military time which right now it's 440 and you can go all the way to the seconds and change them with the up or down arrows hit that center button to lock it in all right now that we have the date and time set you're going to want to bleed the hoses before you calibrate each motor head so to hook it up you know just hook it up uh, with your dosing container um, you know run your hoses and then to manually dose to bleed the air lines, you're going to want to hit the, either the left or the right arrows. So I'm going to hit the right arrow here and it shows manual dose, manual mode pumps. Pump number one, what you would do is take a, you know, some kind of container where you can capture the solution that you're running through the hose. You're going to want to hit that center button and then it's going to start sending the solution through your hose. Once all the air is bled out of the hose, you would hit that center button again to stop the pump from running. Once you've bled all the air off of your hoses, you're gonna to wanna to calibrate each individual motor head to ensure that you're getting accurate doses. So what you wanna do is come over here to the control panel again and hit the up or the down arrow. I'm gonna hit the down arrow, hit it again, and it shows correct pumps. Right now, pump number one is selected. So we're gonna hit the center button again it shows pump one, correct fluid, 100 milliliters equals 105 revolutions. Now, the instructions say to calibrate each individual motor head with 100 milliliters of solution. And what the computer does is it records the number of revolutions that it takes for each pump in order to administer 100 milliliters. And then whenever you program your dose, it's going to take a ratio of those revolutions and calculate it to ensure that you're getting a, a correct dose. So for example, if you wanted to dose 10 milliliters, it's gonna take a tenth, a tenth of 
the revolutions that it made at 100 milliliters in order to dose 10 milliliters. Well, what you want to do to calibrate, you're going to have to have a graduated cylinder, and I have mine up here to 150 milliliters. You're going to want to hold this up underneath your hose where your supplement is going to be dosed into the aquarium. It helps to have a, an assistant with this. So I had my son push the button for me while I got up underneath the hose. And you're going to want to hit either the up or the down arrow. And it's going to start administering the solution. And then you're going to watch the, the solution, you know, the graduated cylinder rise. And then once it gets to 100 milliliters, you're going to hit the up or down arrow again to stop it. And that's going to record the number of revolutions it took for 100 milliliters. Guys, very, very important. Whenever I calibrated all of my motor heads with 100 milliliters of solution, I programmed in a one milliliter dose. And then I wanted to check the accuracy of my dose. So I took an API test tube and I held it up underneath the hose and I waited for it to administer the dose. And then once I captured the dose, I took a small syringe and I extracted the solution from the API test tube and a one milliliter dose was actually two milliliters. And I figured, what's going on here? You know, it's doubling my dose. So I calibrated once again and I ran into the same thing. So I wanted to make sure it just wasn't this motor head. So I checked this one as well. And then I even checked them on the dosing pump for my 25 gallon. Same thing. One milliliter dose was equaling two milliliters in real time. So I reached out to a good friend of mine, Brian, over at Brian's Aquariums. He and I both bought the j DP4s at the same time. And we were consulting with one another while we were setting our pumps up. So I asked him to check the accuracy, accuracy of his dosing as well. He calibrated each of his motor heads with 100 milliliters of solution. He programmed a one milliliter dose. And it was actually dosing two milliliters. So. He's all the way over uh, halfway across the country. I bought mine at a different uh, supplier than he did. So I know three out of three pumps tested are doubling the dose at one milliliter. Now that can throw off a nano aquarium's uh, parameters in, in one day if you're dosing, you know, double what you're supposed to. So I figured, you know, what am I gonna do to correct the situation? What I did was I calibrated each of my pumps with 50 milliliters of solution. I figured if it's dosing two milliliters at 100 milliliters calibration, I calibrated with 50 milliliters of solution, did the same thing, captured the dose, extracted it with the syringe, and it was spot on. One milliliter was uh, calibrated at 50 milliliters of solution. Brian tested his, his was spot on. Now. I wanted to go a step further and to see if this was actually doubling any amount of dose. Like if you were do uh, dosing 10 milliliters, if it was actually gonna dose 20. So I programmed in a four milliliter dose and I captured the, the dose when it was time for it to dose. It did not double the dose to eight milliliters, but it did go to five milliliters. So it was always adding one milliliter extra with my, uh, with my dosing. So guys, I want to point that out. Make sure that you uh, make note of that. If you're running a large aquarium and you're dosing, let's say, 20 milliliters with each dose, it's not going to throw off your parameters as much as it would in a nano aquarium. But I'm dosing in one milliliter increments with my alkalinity seven times, oh, excuse me, 10 times throughout the night on this aquarium. And it would have dosed 20 milliliters if I hadn't have made that correction. Now you can also go a step further. I figured if 50 milliliters actually equaled one milliliter in calibration, I needed a dose in half milliliter increments with my calcium because my daily calcium dose is 3.50 milliliters. So I calibrated pump number two. I captured 25 milliliters of solution. And then I programmed in a one milliliter dose and it was giving me a half a milliliter. So that way I can dose, uh, program in seven doses throughout the day of my calcium supplement. And each dose, each one milliliter dose is equal to a half a milliliter. 
So seven doses is giving me, giving me my three and a half milliliters that I need on a daily basis. I added this card up here to remind me of that fact. Pump number one, one milliliter on the computer equals one milliliter. And pump number two, one milliliter on the computer actually equals a half of a milliliter. All right, so once you've calibrated each of your, each of your uh, pumps, you want to program to administer the doses throughout the day or throughout the night. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to hit the center button, going back to the date and time, hit it again, and it's going to go to uh, set date and time, hit the down arrow, go to set program, hit that center button. Right now, pump number two is selected. That's my calcium dosing pump. I'm going to hit that center button again. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm dosing seven times throughout the day. You can uh, dose up to 24 times per day, but I'm dosing seven times per day. And then I'm going to hit the center button again. Now, your interval is the number of days between your doses. I'm dosing every day, so I leave my interval at zero because I want to dose every day of the week. If you wanted to dose every other day, you would enter one for your interval. And you can go, you know, you can go up to one time a month because you, the the highest number is 30. You could dose once a month if you wanted. All right, so hit the center button once you've got your interval set. Uh, dose number one, one milliliter. But there again, now pump number two is dosing a half a milliliter because I calibrated with 25 milliliters of solution. So I'm dosing half a milliliter on my first dose at one o'clock and then dose number two half a milliliter at two o'clock dose number three half a milliliter at three o'clock and guys you can change the the setting here with the up or down arrows and then hit the center button to move over to number four dose number four half a milliliter at four o'clock dose number five half a milliliter at five o'clock dose six at six o'clock and dose number seven, the final dose, half a milliliter at seven o'clock. Just hit that center button and you can go to another pump. In this case, uh, my alkalinity dosing pump is pump one. Hit the center button. I'm dosing 10 times throughout the night while the lights are off. And this is actually uh, one milliliter, but my interval is zero because I'm dosing every day. Hit the center button, dose number one, is an actual one milliliter dose. See, I've got it written down there. And that's at 12 o'clock midnight, uh, one hour after the lights go off. Dose number two, one milliliter at one o'clock, so on and so forth. Uh, every hour, I'm dosing one milliliter throughout the night. And then dose seven is at six o'clock. Dose eight is at seven o'clock. Dose nine is at, um, eight o'clock and the final dose dose 10 is at nine o'clock in the morning and then once you have everything programmed in just hit the escape key well guys uh, the pump has really been uh, accurate at maintaining my parameters uh, I've been running the dosing pump on my 38 gallon for a week and my 25 gallon has been set up now for two weeks my parameters are spot on I don't have to come down here in the at the evening and dose my calcium anymore and by spreading your dosing throughout the day it's going to make your water parameters much more stable consistently rather than dosing 10 milliliters at one time in the morning you know 10 milliliters throughout 10 hours throughout the night is much more uh, stable for water parameters i'm going to show you guys my dosing containers and then we'll wrap up the video there are all kind of dosing containers you know available online Pretty high priced in my opinion so I just did a do it uh, do it yourself dosing container I bought a four pack of these uh, mason jars fruit canning jars at Walmart I paid just a little over nine dollars for four of them and it has uh, graduations in 200 milliliter increments the top graduation is 800 milliliters you could you could fit 900 milliliters in this thing but the reason I chose this um, the lid is actually in two pieces what I did is I drilled a hole right through the center and then another small hole to allow air to come in and you know, 
to prevent a vacuum when the solution is being sucked out. And um, I just pour my alkalinity or my calcium supplement in the jar. And then whenever I need to remove the lid to refill, the hose still, you know, still attached. I can unscrew this, open it up, and the hose won't twist inside. Pour my solution in, put the top back on. And let me show you what it looks like on the aquarium. But this is a really inexpensive way to uh, store your liquids for, you know, dosing containers. And I know some people are using plastic containers and they complain about them tipping. But these things are solid. You know, the hose doesn't really affect the stability of the container. And for a nano aquarium, even for a larger aquarium, your 900 milliliters of solution will last you quite a while. Here they are actually set up under my tank. And uh, the container here on the left, I've marked it Reef Carbonate because I'm using uh, two different types of alkalinity supplement, Reef Carbonate on the 38 and Aquavitro's 8.4 on the 25. And I'm using calcification by Aquavitro on both aquariums. The tubing that I'm using to uh, go into the container is not an aquarium specific airline tubing. It's much more rigid. I picked this up at Lowe's and it's very stiff. It doesn't curl up in the bottom. Whereas the, the aquarium specific airline tubing, tubing is much more flexible. So I have this going into the first hose on each uh, motor head. You know, that's, uh, that's the intake. And then I have the actual aquarium specific airline tubing returning or going to the aquarium. I'll show you, show you what's going on there. I have my calcium hose on the left and my alkalinity hose on the right. If there's any way around it, guys, try not to dose into a filtration chamber, uh, especially if you're dosing, you know, large, large doses at one time. But my calcium is only a half a milliliter at a time, so don't really have to worry too much, but you just don't want to dose, you know, large volumes of calcium or alkalinity into a small chamber where it will go into an intake pump and cause precipitation. But one milliliter of alkalinity every hour and a half a milliliter of calcium every couple hours won't really affect this aquarium. And then on my 25, I've actually got it going into the display, coming in just behind the, the screen top. See if I can show you where they're hovering just above the water surface. And because this is an all-in-one tank, I don't have to worry about the water rising here and you know, creating a back siphon. But I'm dosing into the display on this aquarium because the filtration chamber is much smaller. And I was able to kind of rig that up pretty good. But like I said, uh, the pumps are doing a fantastic job for me. Uh, each pump cost me $63. I got it on Amazon and I got free shipping, your know, Amazon Prime, two pumps at $125 or $130, couldn't beat it. You know, I looked at all the other dosing pumps and for the price, two pumps at $135 was the way to go and so far they're serving me well. Well guys, I really appreciate everybody watching the video. If you have any questions at all about the j DP4, just leave excuse me, leave them in the comments below and I'll be sure to get back to you. And as always guys, thank you for watching. Take care.